Good evening. So as promised, we will begin right at 7 o'clock. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here and for taking the time and for the social distancing. I know there are also people in the hall gathering, and I want to welcome them as well. And then, of course, people uh, that are live streaming. Just to let you know pretty much the format, each night is a different talk. Okay, so each night is a different set of talks and stories, okay? Tomorrow, I'm also just going to have an afternoon session from 1.30 to 2.30, which is totally different from any of the evening sessions. It's going to be more informal, maybe some question and answer. Maybe I'll just break out into song for the whole hour. I don't know. Um, and, and I'm just trying to do that to help those who maybe not, do not feel comfortable coming out at night, et cetera, et cetera. So also, I want to remind you, please, to turn off all your uh, electronic devices. And um, so the evening will just be very relaxed. We'll start right at 7, which I did, and I will end right at 8, okay? So even if I'm in the middle of a story, I'll just stop and walk out. No, no, I'm serious. Or if I'm singing, I'll just stop and walk out, and out I go. Okay, just so you're aware of that, it's not that you have offended me, uh, it's just that I'm very big on promising and holding myself accountable and in recognizing that your time is sacred and valuable as well. Okay, so I, I just want to once again thank you for being here. I, this, is, this, of course, is my first visit to the Jersey Shore, and uh, I, I love it. I really do. I don't understand all of the people who are carrying stuff everywhere. I mean, no, it's all over town. Uh, I mean, there, there, there was this man, and first of all, the, this woman, who I suppose is the wife, had like the three children, and she was carrying stuff underneath here, plus pulling the children, and then this man behind her had like seats and... Uh, like the whole grocery, I don't know. I mean, it was like everyone looks like they're moving in this town. No, I, I'm just saying it's hilarious. You should no, you should go out and look. I mean, they just kind of all all just migrate. You, I mean, by the groups of people. Um, then I, I'll tell you today. Um, <laughs> I went to this is a riot. I went to Aunt B. So get this. So you have to understand something. Um, please wear the microphone. Well, what do we... I put it like this? Oh. Hold on. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, what is your name? Uh, Jennifer. Okay. Oh. It's kind of like the sound person giving me... <laughs> wait till she... Wait till she signs. Be quiet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... I didn't know how that worked, to be honest. No, no one tells me anything. So anyway, I went to Aunt B's. Have, do you know Aunt B's? Okay. Great. Um, so, so the only way I know about Aunt B's is because someone told me uh, on social media that you have to go to this place. Okay. Well, first of all, you need to know something about me as a missionary. I carry no cash on me, and I only have two credit cards, one in Pope Francis's name and a gas card. That's it. <laughs> and that's for emergencies, okay? I have no cash, okay? So I go to Aunt B's, and um, I'm standing in line, and I get there, and I'll go, well, I'll have... A a medium cone, um, and why don't we go ahead and put M&Ms all around it? You know what I mean? And, oh, it was, okay, so I even took a selfie. Hold on one second um, to let you see this experience because it, it, it just was an amazing experience. And so, um, you know, I'm getting ready to, you know, 
take the ice cream cone. Um, there I am with the, the ice cream cone right, right there. Okay. And she goes, that will be so much money. And I said, oh, well, here's my credit card. Look at the name. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> and um, she goes, oh, we don't take credit card. <laughs> they don't take credit card. They took the cone back. <laughs> what are they going to do with it? So I said, they go, there's an ATM right here. It's an ATM off to the left. Right. So I went. The ATM doesn't work. It's broken. No, they took the ice cream. What, is that normal for you people? I mean, really? <laughs> None of you look surprised. I mean, I thought I would elicit, really? Yeah, go do it tonight and watch what happens. So I went and I got money and I came back and now I'm going to have to explain the, the $4.53 charge on uh, Francis's card. So that, that I, I just wanted to let you know. So that was a very unique experience uh, from me. So that was, that was great. Tomorrow I'm going to Soul Berry. I've never been there. I, uh-oh, should I not go? Oh, cash again? <laughs> If I go there and they don't take car, what is your name, dear? No, 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 okay. So, oh, finally, one last thing before we begin. One last thing. By the way, this street is one way. <laughs> I've been going down this street. I have been. And I don't know who the man is that lives across the street. But can I tell you something? You need him to become a parishioner. <laughs> because he has gotten after me. I, I just keep going down the street. It's, I didn't know. No one says it. I mean, it's down there, but it's not right here. So that, that uh, you can laugh with your masks on. I, I mean, I'm serious. I, so that was exciting. I also went to Wawa today because there's no Starbucks here. And... And while I went to Wawa, is it Wawa? <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, I went to Wawa, and there was a woman there that said uh, to her lady friend, I don't want to embarrass her because she is here. Um, I don't want to point her out. But she said, I think that's the priest visiting. <laughs> and then she goes, I also think he's Baptist. <laughs> 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 what does that mean? Okay. So, well, you know, that's, that's just how I make a living, uh, just going around uh, telling, telling stories. So, um, tonight I want to focus in really on something that I think we need, not only as a church, not only as a nation, but as a world, and that is getting back to the basic of what Jesus has called us to be and to do. And it's very, very, very simple, but yet so difficult. The basis of all Scripture. The basis of all our commandments, the basis of everything, is rooted in love, okay? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you shall what? Love your as yourself, okay? If we wanted to change the word... The word would be kindness. We've lost what it means to be kind. I'm serious. Look at the way people respond to one another these days. Sadly, sadly, it's as if 
a group of people enjoy when another one of us, meaning brothers or sisters, are down. And so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to give you three simple steps on how all of us can be kind. And it's very, very simple, but yet very, very difficult. Number one, if we're going to learn to love, if we're going to learn to be kind, if we're going to learn to really be rooted in Christ, lesson number one, we've got to stop being jerks. You hear me? Jerks. We've got to stop being jerks. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you've got to realize that if you wake up in the morning and things aren't going well, you're tired, you got a visiting priest who might be Baptist, (laughs) something makes you nuts, you're sick, things are tough for your family, your children aren't behaving, you're late for work, they don't accept credit cards at Aunt B's. It doesn't mean you have to pass on your messiness to others. Stop being jerks. Now you're going to see something over the next two days. Number one, I'm a storyteller. Number two, I use stories and experiences that happens to me and I apply them and try to find out where Jesus is in the midst of that. Jesus used the same technique, right? He used stories. And what are they called? That's right. They're parables. Jesus used real living experiences. And so I'm going to give you an experience about how not to be a jerk. So, number one. So, you have to understand something. Every, I am home only one day a week. Even in the pandemic. I leave every Saturday morning at 5 a.m., I connect somewhere, I go to that place, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday I'm on a plane, I go home, I wash my clothes, I get my mail, I pick up my dog, I play with my dog, I have a meeting with my bishop, I drop my dog off, I pack my clothes and meet, and then the next morning go to sleep and it's 5 a.m., on Saturday. That's my life, 360 days a year. So for those of us that travel, I go to the airport, I go through security, I get up at the gate, it's 15 minutes till the flight is to take off, and this is what I see at the gate. The gate agent doing this. My brothers and sisters, For those of you who travel, that is not a good sign. No, I'm serious. If your gate agent is doing this 15 minutes before your flight, you better be concerned. Now, usually, I don't travel in my collar, okay? This is exactly how I travel. My sandals, my shorts, and my hoodie. Okay, because when you get on a plane and you sit next to someone and they say you're and they see that you are a priest, they begin to behave totally different. No, I'm just saying they knock over their drink. They hide their magazine. They start trying to talk religion of which they know nothing about. They sit up straight. And I have to sit there and go, I'm not a nun. (laughs) So, uh, you know. uh, uh, Are there any religious sisters here? Sorry. Oh, sister. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Here. Here. 
hand sanitizer for you. I, what, what, what order are you from? Oh, I love you all. I love you all. Here you go. I'm a big fan. There, that's for you, sister. For you. God bless. Hold on one second, sister. I have something else for you. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Yes, from the Holy Father. I have for you one of the 50 crosses he gave me for you. God bless you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you. What is the likelihood of a religious sister being here? When <laughs> so, yes, I love our sisters. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. May, I'll go to confession to myself later. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, so I get there, and I'm supposed to be flying to Seattle to speak at a huge convention. Huge. About 4,000 people. I'm speaking there. I'm giving the keynote Saturday night. I'm flying to Seattle. I'm going from Lexington to Chicago, Chicago to Seattle. So I get there, and all of a sudden at the airplane, I see, and I'm like, um, hey, Lisa, she's the person at the gate, and I, she goes, yes, Father, because she knows me. I said, what, what's going on with the flight? She goes, shh. I said, Lisa, why am I, shh? She said, your flight to Chicago is canceled. I said, Lisa, I have to be on that flight today. I have to be in Seattle to speak tonight to 3,000 ladies. And she's like, oh, okay, no problem, Father. We'll get, hold on. We got it. I said, what do you got? She goes, we've got you on the same flights tomorrow. I'm like, Lisa... Did you not hear what I said? I have to be there tonight. Oh, no problem. Okay. You're going to go from Lexington to Cleveland, Cleveland to Houston, Houston to Chicago, Chicago to Seattle. Now, some of you may laugh, but you also have to remember, I'm at a small regional airport that uses small regional jets. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not like Philadelphia that have major options. We have two airlines. I said, Lisa, am I confirmed on all of these seats? Oh, and all these flights. Oh, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Lexington to Cleveland. No problem. Cleveland to Houston, no problem. Houston, we've got a problem. <laughs> this is what I hear at gate C-32 at George Bush Intercontinental Airport. You ready? I'll, I'll shut my mic off. This is at the gate. Have you ever noticed at the gate they always do that? Attention in the gatehouse, looking for Chicago O'Hare passenger, James Psycho. James Psycho. Please come for an important message here at gate C-32, James Psycho. It's not my name. No, seriously, I don't move. I'm sitting there. It's not my name. <clears throat> Names are very important. Read your scripture. The first thing God did is he created and then he named. Names are important. So I just, I just sat there. Ten minutes later. Attention at gate C-32. C-32, looking for O'Hare passenger James Sicko. James Sicko. James Sicko, if you're in the gatehouse, please come forward. 
We've got psycho and we've got sicko. So finally, I go up to the counter and I go, um, hi, my name is Father Jim Sitchko. Oh my gosh, we've been calling you. I said, no, you've been calling a sicko and a psycho. I'm Sitchko. She goes, did you say your father? I said, yes, I'm Father Jim Sitchko. Are you a Catholic priest? I go, yes, I'm a Catholic priest. She goes, I'm Catholic. <laughs> and I'm like, great, good for you. She goes, God is so good. And I'm like, okay, um, you might want to tell me why God is good. Oh, Father, oh my gosh. She goes, I'm Catholic. I go to St. Timothy. Do you know Father Mark? Father, like we all know one another. You know, oh yeah, I know Father Mark. Yeah, yeah. And so I go, you know, why are, what, what's going on? She goes, oh, well, I was so worried because I read your history about how we've had to place you on all of these flights and cancellations. And I was so worried because I have to tell you that I have to take you off this flight and put you on a flight the day after tomorrow. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I lost it. No, 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 no. I became a jerk. No, I'm serious. I lost. You should have seen the woman. Father, Father, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? I said, I'm going to show you what Jesus is going to do. No, I'm serious. I lost it. She kept trying to calm me down. People who were boarding the plane were like, gosh, I wish our pastor had that much energy, you know? <laughs> they called in the blue coat people. They called in the suit people. It was, you know, Father, relax. They told me that United was merging their, plane, their uh, corporate offices and that they were you know, merging with Continental and that they were taking the offices from Houston and bringing them to Chicago and all of the people, all of the executives and all of their team filled the plane with all their families. But one person gave up their seat for me. And I was like, well, thank you very much. And they said, well, Father, we have to tell you it's in first class. I said... First class? I can't fly first class as a papal missionary of mercy. I'm sorry, I can't. Trust me, someone will write the Pope an anonymous letter, okay? Trust me. Let me tell you something. I used to be a shepherd to God's people, okay? I was a pastor for 12 years. Let me tell you the first lesson I learned about being a shepherd to God's people. Sheep bite. Okay? Just being honest with you. They said, Father, you either go on this flight or you don't. So I get on the flight. This is me. I'm going to demonstrate it. Okay? I'm sitting in 1A, which is against the window. Here is 1B. This seat's not there. I get in. There's a man sitting here. He's in a suit and tie, cufflinks. You know, I go, excuse me, excuse me, and I sit down. I sit down. Let me tell you something. I would never, ever fly United Airlines in my life. I'm just telling you right now. It is the worst. This is the man sitting here. Okay, this is, this is the man. This is the man looking at me. You ready? Yeah, don't bother saying anything because, oh, for 40 minutes straight. We are halfway to Chicago. The poor man doesn't say a word. He doesn't have a chance, but he doesn't say a word. Finally, he's not responding to me, so forget it. I just decide to not talk to him anymore. I pull out the in-flight magazine. It's called Hemisphere. 
pull it out. I open it up to page 12 under Voices, Answering Man, written by the CEO and chairman of the board of United Airlines. There's his picture. Do you go to church? <laughs> yeah. Sitting next to me for 40 minutes listening me complain and berate his airline was the chairman of the board and chief executive officer of United Airlines. And can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters? He was more Jesus to me than some of my own brother priests. Because why? He listened. He didn't get irate. He didn't become defensive. He didn't call me names. He did exactly what Jesus does. He took us right where I was and right where we are and he journeyed with me. And then I said, do you go to church? <laughs> and he said, no. And can I tell you something? Ever since that day, he and I communicate every week since that experience and he goes to church now. Not a Catholic church, but he's going to church. You see, you don't have to be a jerk. Number two, honor the absent. If you're going to be like Christ, if you're going to learn to love one another, if you're going to hashtag be kind, then you have to honor the absent. And what does that mean? Stop talking about people behind their backs. Stop the gossip. If you have something to say about someone, say it to their face. And then be quiet and listen for their response. My brothers and sisters, every person in this space, if there are any over there, I don't know if there are, but if there are, every one of us is going through something that no one else knows about. Stop the gossip. Nothing is more damaging to our own spiritual lives than denigrating another person. It's a really serious form of uncharity, and of course, it makes the other person feel miserable. Number three. So number one, don't be a jerk. Number two, honor the absent. Number three, here's a little bit of knowledge from St. Ignatius. Always, always, always give people the benefit of the doubt. Always think positive of someone when they ask you a question instead of negative unless you know factually otherwise. Do you understand? So when someone comes to you with the question, you think positive instead of negative unless you know factually otherwise. Here I am at Aunt B's with no cash. You think someone would come to my aid. 
I'm sitting around, there's people all over. Anyone got $4? All I have is a credit card in Pope Francis' name. You should have seen the looks I got. I think he's Baptist. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, I'll give, you, I'll give you an amazing story. How many of you ever heard of the National Prayer Breakfast? Have you ever heard of it? Okay. Well, excuse me? National Prayer Breakfast. It's held in Washington, D.C. once a year. I was invited as, as, uh, to give the opening prayer. Uh, you know, the president, his wife, everyone is... I mean, you should have seen me. I was in selfie heaven. I'm serious. Oh, I'm serious. I was running around. To, oh, oh, my gosh. Even if I didn't, don't agree with these people, I would. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Nancy Pelosi. Oh, my gosh. You do look. OK, here we go. OK, great, great. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The Dalai Lama. Ah, OK, let's take a picture. Oh, I'm serious. I was running all over the place. So then afterwards, oh, and I was dressed up, too. I had my cufflinks on, my collar, my suit. They take me all around Washington, give me this private tour, and then they bring me back to my hotel, and I get out of the car, and as I'm about to walk into the hotel, what do I see out of the corner of my eye? I see this young, homeless boy. I'd say 19 years old, young man. And I see exactly who he's coming to, me. And my handlers are trying to push me into the hotel. And what does the young man do? He calls out my name, Father. And I said, yes. And he comes up to me. And he goes, do you have any money on you? I said, nope. I said, I don't carry cash on me. Never have, never do. I said, but are you hungry? He said, I'm starved. And he looked homeless. I said, well, look at that. There's an Italian restaurant across the street. Would you like to go with me to dinner? I'd love to. As we're walking across the street, as I'm Googling and across the street to the restaurant, I find out it's a five-star Italian restaurant. <laughs> the maitre d' opens up, Hey, padre, come stai? Eh, bene, grazie, eh. And do you know what he does? He brings me in, and then he shuts the door on the homeless kid. And I said, no, no, scusi, scusi, no, 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 no. He's with me. Now, I don't know what ethnicity the majority of you are, okay? But I'm from Italy, okay? My mama's from Calabria, Calabresa, huh? Eh, eh, you know? And I don't know if you know when Italians get upset what we do, you know? We use our hands and we scream, okay? You don't got to be offended, we just talk loud. Do you hear me? We talk loud. And we use our hands. Well, when I told him the maitre d', that that man was with me, he lost it. He stopped me. Ten minutes later, he came and got us. No problem. Hey. You know. And what does he do? Where does he sit us? Excuse me? He put us in the storage closet. He put us with the toilet tissue, the roll of paper towel, the disinfectant. He put a cardboard table, white tablecloth, and two folding chairs. I was never more embarrassed and humiliated in my entire life. <laughs> I remember looking at him and I said, I said, just to make him feel bad, I said, excuse me, who are you? 
Do you know how expensive it is to get a private table in a restaurant like this? I mean, we've got our own dining room. He just kept eating. As we were walking out, I realized something. I never, ever, ever asked him his name. I said, excuse me, I said, what is your name? And he lit up. He lit up like I've never seen anyone light up before. I said, hey, what's that about? He said, if you want to know my name, then that means that I mean something to you. I said, not only do I want to know your name, I want to take a selfie with you. Oh, my gosh. He goes, you really do? I said, yeah. He goes, my name is Kyle, Father. I said, Kyle, let me tell you something. You may be down in your luck right now, but I'll tell you something. You and I come from the same God. The same God that created you created me. And that same God loves you. And that same God has mercy on you. Here, here's Kyle. Hold on one second. He's in here. Oh, there we are. There's Kyle. And can I tell you something, my brothers and sisters? This is the face of Jesus. I have never seen Kyle again, and I may never ever see him again. But what I can tell you is that whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. Do you understand? Always, always, always think positive instead of negative. You never, ever know. I'll give you another story. So, before the pandemic hit, I was speaking over in Melbourne, Australia. Same thing. I left this time instead of on Saturday, I left on Thursday, because you know why? You have two days going over. I spoke Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, flew back to the United States on Thursday, and then on Friday, off to India. Okay? Kochi, India. So I went Lexington to Atlanta, Atlanta to LAX, and then I was supposed to get on a Delta flight LAX nonstop to Melbourne. When I get to LAX, guess what they tell me? The flight is canceled. The flight is canceled. They said, we'll put you on a flight tomorrow. I said, I can't be on a flight tomorrow. I've got to be there. It takes two days to get there. I've got to be there for Saturday morning. I'm speaking Saturday night. They said, well, let's see. I said, put me on another airlines. You see the Italian? Put me on another airlines. They said, all right. So they put me on an airline called Qantas. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. So they put me on Qantas. So while I'm on Qantas, oh, I just realized something. My, my watch broke. It's all right. So I, I was, I'm on Qantas, and I go on the airplane dressed as I do, my sandals, my shorts, this hoodie. I sit on the window, and you know what I do? I put up the hoodie, and I go to sleep so that no one will bother me. I wake up, and the flight schedule says 10 more hours. Can you believe it? That's a long flight. So you know what I do? I pull out my breviary. Do you know what a breviary is? It's your prayer book. So I pull out my breviary and I start saying my prayers. The woman next to me, excuse me. Yes. Are you praying? Yes, I'm praying. Would you mind praying for me? 
no, I don't mind praying for you. I'll pray for you. She said, good. She goes, because I'm battling my second bout of breast cancer and I also have a tumor on my sacrum. I said, not only will I pray for you, I always carry with me these special crosses from Pope Francis because you never know when there will be a religious sister in your congregation. <laughs> and so I gave her the cross and I said, I'll pray for you. And she turned to me and she said, well, thank you. I said, no problem. I said, my name is Father Jim Sitchko. I'm a papal missionary for Pope Francis. She said, my name is Olivia Newton-John. You know who I'm talking about? I went, you're the one that I want. Woo, hoo, hoo, honey. The one that I want. Yeah, here she is. Hold on. So, wait. So, after a 15-hour trip, I go and I preach in Melbourne, Australia. And who shows up for the 7 a.m. Mass? Olivia Newton-John. Is she Catholic? No. She is not Catholic. And where do I find her and her husband after Mass? Kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament. Here she is at the end of Mass with her cross and her husband. And now who do I visit with every week on the phone? Olivia. And what do we talk about? Faith and healing, and mercy. And what am I trying to tell you? What I'm trying to tell you is, my brothers and sisters, you are Jesus. Do you realize that every week you come here, if not every day, and you receive Jesus in the Word? You receive Jesus in the Eucharist. You receive Jesus through one another. And then what do you do? You leave here and you're sent forth to do what? You're sent forth to be Christ to the world. You're sent forth to be Jesus to the people of Brigantine and beyond. You see, let me just ask you a question, a real question. Who today, who today was brought to Jesus by you. Not, not by your speech, but who today was led to Christ by your actions, by your patience, by your love, by the twinkle in your eye, even if they can't see your face. Do you see what I'm saying? You never know. You never know. And that's why, my brothers and sisters, it always pays to be kind. And when you show love, that love is shown by, number one, not being a jerk. Number two, by honoring the absent. Stop the gossip. And number three, always, always, always give people the benefit of the doubt. That's the way it happens. You got to live the message. You know, both of my brothers graduated from the Naval Academy. And at the Naval Academy, they have to do a sport, and the sport they chose was boxing. I, I, I have no sports ability in my life, okay? So both of my brothers decided to give me a gift, 
And the gift they gave me is they decided to take me to Las Vegas to see a boxing match. Okay, well, I didn't know what do you wear to a boxing match as a priest. I mean, I didn't. So I wore my cassock, you know what I mean, and my collar, I, I, my papal attire. Oh, you know, what else? Well, I didn't know that they got me ringside seats with them. Here we are at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, and I'm walking down to the front row, and you could hear people say, oh, I think that's the boxing chaplain. God bless you, Father Son. God bless you, Father Son. You know? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I'm seated in the first row, and all of a sudden, this woman comes into the ring, and she holds up this sign, and she sees me, and she puts the sign down. And then she puts it up again. And then she walks back, she puts it down, you know. And then she goes off, and then in comes... You know, there's this huge jumbotron. In comes to the ring. Here comes the, the, the boxer, the star, Oscar De La something. I don't know. He, and and he, he starts shadow boxing, and people are going crazy. And, and, you know, I'm just looking at him, you know. And all of a sudden, his eye catches my eye, and he, and he comes over to the edge of the ring. And he leans over at me, and I'm looking up at him. I'm like, oh, my gosh, i got to take a selfie, you know? So, oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm taking a selfie, and he and I are on the Jumbotron. He's on, we're on the Jumbotron taking a picture, and he looks at me, and he does this. He does this. You ready? Well, I didn't know what to do, so I just went like that, you know? And both of my brothers... Both of my brothers look at me and say at the same time, Jimmy, is that going to help him win? And I said, yeah, if he knows how to box. What's the point? The point is this, my brothers and sisters, you just can't be coming here week after week after week and doing the same thing without changing and living your faith. I know, trust me, first of all, I want to say a word of thank you to your pastor and also to Miss Kelso, Kelso. because let me tell you, they had every right to cancel this mission. I'm glad they didn't, because you know why? People are hungry. People are hungry more than ever for the Word of God. People are afraid. People need the church to be there to say to them, be not afraid, be smart, use common sense, but recognize the power of the Eucharist. You know, I used to preach all the time. I said, you know, the people in the United States are spoiled because they don't understand going without. They don't understand going out without the Eucharist. Ah, we do now. We do now. I'll end, I I, I think I'll end with this story. Then, do you mind if I, I sing a little bit? I might sing a little bit. Then I will probably, um, you know, I'll tell you another st- quick story. Hold off one second before doing that. I still have time, don't I? Let me see what time it is. Twelve minutes. Oh, I have to, oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you get a cross. And I can tell that. I'll end with the here. Well, so I'll, I'll tell you a story. And, and that is this. I have a great love of my mom. 
My father is an amazing man. I'll share about him tomorrow. But I have a great love of my mom. My mom is from Calabria. She's four foot nine. 88 years old. And uh, by the way, I want to tell you, thank you, Father, because on the last night, he is allowing me to take up an offering for this ministry. And anything and everything is welcomed. It's not how much you give, it's that you're willing to give. And so I'm very grateful. I want to say that. So on the, that's very, very grateful. I, I'll tell you, not, not every pastor allows it. Okay? So I just move on. I shake the dust. In this place, the sand, and I go on. So, anyway, I love my mom. I'm a mama's boy. I'm the youngest of five. What else can I tell you? Every Tuesday... I'll just tell you right now, ever since I've been four years old, that I can remember, on Tuesday, when I would wake up, I would find my mother, not on Sunday, but on Tuesday, cooking her sauce with the meatballs in it, making her pasta, and then broiling chicken. And I remember I would watch her do it and I would go into, not the kitchen, but I would go into the dining room, the formal dining room. And there would be four places set with the best china, the greatest silver and crystal. And at 11 o'clock sharp, every Tuesday, I would hear a loud honk and who would come through the front door, because we didn't lock our door, four huge, stinky, smelly, African-American garbage men. And you know what she would do? She would feed them. And she would wait on them. We are the only family I know that plans their vacation around Tuesday at 11 a.m. She has never missed a day. Two years ago, January 24th, my mother, at 88 years old, made her pasta, made her sauce, the horn blew, they came out, they fa I took selfie with them that day, hold on. No, I did. I don't know why. I took a selfie with them. I said, guys, I've never had a selfie with the trash men who eat at my house every day. There they are. There they are. And my mother fed them, cleaned up. She went back to say her rosary, her Divine Mercy Chaplet, and then she died. And my heart has been broken ever since. My mother was a smart woman. She left all of us children only one thing in the will. One thing. We each got one thing. Everything else went to the poor and the needy. You know what she left me? Her sauce recipe. I'm the only one with her sauce recipe. No one else has her sauce recipe. All my brothers and sisters try to get her sauce recipe. Ain't gonna happen. I got it. I got it. And guess what? I have a chef friend named Chef Giada De Laurentiis. And I gave it to her. I said, what? I wanna do something special for my mom's 90th birthday. She said, bottle her sauce. It's all natural, there are no sugar, nothing. It's all natural. No sugar, no nothing. So guess what? I bottled her sauce. I said, Giada, how many bottles shall we make? She said, make 4,000. I said, 4,000? What are you gonna do with it? She said, sell it. I said, well, I'm not taking the money for it. I said, you know what I'll do? I'll take half of the money 
and give it to hospice as they transition people to new life with Christ. And the other half, I'll donate to the poor in Appalachia to teach them how to feed one another. On August 15th, two years ago, my mother was born on August 15th. We're approaching her birthday. Her name is Maria Assumpta Sarasso. On August 15th, two years ago, look what happened. We bottled her sauce. Look at that. All natural. In two years, 50,000 bottles have been sold. Kroger's, Whole Foods, all of these different places. I have 10 cases here. They're right back here. If you want sauce, $10, it's yours. If you don't have $10, guess what? It's yours. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. You are the Son of the living God. Jesus, I trust in you. 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 You are the Son of the living God. Jesus, I trust in you, Jesus, I trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Have mercy on me, have mercy on me, Amen. You know, I've never heard that song before until today. Never, ever. And so her being so spontaneous, I said, you know what? I want to try to sing this song. She did it. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank you so much.
Wait, let me tell you. Please don't forget. Please don't forget. Tomorrow, 7 to 8 p.m., here in the church, 60 minutes, that's it. You can bring whomever you want. We'll find them a place. Tomorrow also, 1.30 to 2.30, maybe some question, answer, whatever. Just visit 60 minutes as well. I'll probably do some singing. I don't know, okay? But please, please, please come back. Make the time. Make the effort. I want to say a special word to those who are homebound, those who are not able to be present, and those who are watching. Know our great love for you. And if you're able to get out, we want you here. We're social distanced. We're in our masks. And I'm going to take a selfie right now. All right? So just hold on one second. Because I don't want the bishop to think I'm at the beach. Great. Sauce is over there. Have a great night. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>